Hello, hello, this is Arcades, and welcome to another quick start guide for Foundry. And uh, we're going to be doing some things that's going to be involving this elevator and a few other things, including this little stick that's in my hand that allows you to do magic. With the push of a button, you can create and level and, well, okay. Maybe crates a bit of an exaggeration. Modify the terrain to your will. So you can level out an area or just make things disappear. <laughs> so yeah, let's get in today because we got explosives and the elevator. Here we are back in our little world and time to address something here. This has been the ferrite ore we've been working on and the tech of ore isn't looking too different. As you can see it's low, <clears throat> kind of running out, but we still got plenty to keep working with so that's not a problem. So what we're really going to work on now is starting to head our way towards expanding so that we can do some serious material collection. So we're going to work on uh, starting up the preps for expanding to get to the greater materials. And uh, yeah, so hopefully this should go uh, well enough. <laughs> Look at these little BSDBs. Okay, first thing we're going to do. We need steel. We need two things, steel and explosives. I believe I've already got those researched, so I showed that, but I kind of already did it. <laughs> but in order to access them, we need a new material. It's called Ignum Ore. The thing is, is unlike the Tecum and the Ferrite Ore, it does not appear on the surface like these do or this which we're still getting to that later so we're not worrying about that now yeah technically we could set up a thing but then we gotta belt all the material back that's kind of a pain in the ass so and it doesn't really advance us we are going to research some technologies here one we are going to research the elevator which will unlock the freight elevator. We're going to research the freight elevator. I have like, here's the research two packs. <laughs> Whole bunch are just stored in here. So all it is is literally taking from those spares. Uh, we are also going to research the freight elevator, which unlocks Freight Elevator 2 and the Underground Mining. So we're going to go ahead and unlock those as well. Because we need the Geolot. Well, technically you don't need it, but it makes things a hell of a lot easier. <clears throat> we need this global uh, geological scanner. And that should be good for now. Rest can wait. Okay. I mean, technically, I could research it all and be done with it, but there is the fun in that, right? We're not getting to there. Okay, now that we've got those researched, we're going to make a geological scanner, and we're going to make an elevator. I already collected the materials ahead of time, so... <clears throat> All right, now I've done some looking around pre-planning and we're going to work over here. Whoop. The thing is, is I kind of want to start a little thing that's about the same height as this for the elevator because this is going to be our main shaft for movement between areas. So we're going to need a little bit of flooring to place the elevator down. <clears throat> now the big reason for this is that 
our main form of going down is go for digging down under the ground is going to be this elevator because it self digs and terminates all the elemental blocks as far as I know at this point underneath of it or above it depending on the case of use let's see hold on uh, where are we at so those are at 150 right yes we want one yeah those are at 150 And we're just gonna put a bunch of dirt here. We're gonna grab the elevator. And I'm just gonna place it right here. Um, actually, hang on. Oh, and if you noticed, I am currently on the new usability patch that was released. I already have a video on it. it came out before this one, so uh, I should go back and check it out if you haven't already. Because I kind of want it to be... Because I've kind of gone over this already, so I was like trying to figure out the positioning. I mean, yeah, this is roughly it. Okay, so now it has two doors. The elevator has two doors and yeah, no, okay, I see what my problem is. Because I want to nestle it inside this gap right here. should do yeah that looks like it works okay so as you see it has two doors one facing on each side has a nice little light in there <laughs> I was a hand of that um, and when we come in here we have this config frame now we're gonna have a use for this but not right now first thing we're gonna do before this one make this a little easier granted I did a little scouting out and that's why I know where to put this but we're just working on this right here just showing you how to use this <clears throat> okay so we have the geological scanner now the point of this is to find out what the train is like below now it scans from five blocks in one direction around it I'll show you once the screen pops up so, we need to find out where Ignum is. That is our big material that we need right now to make steel. <clears throat> so we're going to scan. Okay, so here's the thing. So when this result comes back, So when this result comes back, we have a few layers here. And here it tells you what those layers are. So Technum is down there, Ferrite is right there, we have Ignum right there, and we have Limestone right above the Ignum. Well we want Ignum, but we're going to go ahead and take these all into account for our elevator. Okay, so to use the elevator and set it up, we are going to first Come in here, this is your configuration screen. We're gonna add a station. We're gonna make two right now. I'm gonna add more later off screen, but for now just show you how to use this, this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna come up here. I'm gonna edit this one 
since this is at the same level as my power station, I'm going to name it power. Now, here's the thing. There's a four character limit to the naming <clears throat> of each floor. The reason why this is stated as far as as of this recording is Dev says that it's so you can allow a maximum number of stations to be displayed in the control panel, which I believe he said was up to 24 at the moment. And in order to fit those in there, they only have a four character limit. So right now I'm just doing PWR for my power level. And for the next floor that I'm going to put, I'm going to put my factory floor. And that's going to be at a height of 135. You hit the check marks to say they're good, to insert them in. You click this to edit them and check to do that. You can hit this to delete the floor. You hit add station to bring up a fresh one. And then this is the height that the station will be at. This is where your foot height will be at. All right, and then you hit confirm, grays out, and then you start hearing the thing do its thing. And you see it will dig down. I can't see it very well. And as it's doing this, oh, it just got done. It'll say currently building everything be grayed out. Now, once that is done, you can just click the floor you want. Doors close. We'll travel to the floor. Now you notice from here. Then from here. I mean, technically you make preparations as you need to ahead of time. You don't have to do it in this order. If you know where it's going, you can actually just dig it out ahead of time. And there you go. We've got... That is how you set up the elevator. That is the most basic thing you want to do. However, we're doing much more than this, so give me a moment to set this up and I will be right back. Okay, one quick thing. Now, these, the scanner info, this is an average. This isn't, so as you see here, it says five this way, five this way. If that's five blocks that way, five blocks that way. Now you notice right here at the top of the screen, there's a little black bar. That's because when it did its scan, there was no block right here and no block right there. So that was five blocks that way. So if they're black, that means there's no block for it to detect. So if I get rid of this and this. And that. I'll hit scan again and you notice there's a bigger gap there now if I was to put that there and put that to there it's filled in and one more time and you see, that's the fifth block I took out. So like I said, this is an average of the five block. This is a scan of the five blocks. So consider this data more as an average at best for directly below this thing. Okay, I have now set up the floors for what I want. I have power, I have a factory floor, I have the limestone ore which we will get to at some point. We have the Ignamore, which is what we're going after. There's a Xenoferrite layer and there is a Tekken layer. Those will be later. So for now, <clears throat> to show you, we are going to go down 
to the ignum layer, which this said it was about 88, it was the bottom of it, which is what I set this to. I set each of these to roughly about the bottom of each layer, according to the scanner, and we're going to go check it out. So we're going to go to ign the ignum floor. it's not an exact science like I said that's an average so we're gonna correct this a little bit I'm gonna come up let's see this is about this is three blocks tall so we're gonna I'm gonna bring it up actually four so we're gonna just come up to the config and we're gonna go to the igno layer and and I said four so that would be 91 And we'll hit confirm. All right, we got that. So the, now you'll probably you'll want to do that for each floor. However, you want to set it up, you'll need to adjust it as necessary. But for a single floor to the rubble layer, this is all we need. So now we need ignum, and it is as simple as. Just drilling it out. Now each of these blocks will give you one ignum ore. The underground miner does not have that same ratio, but for now we will not we're not doing that right now. We're just getting a hold of some ignum. Okay, so I collected 200 ignum ore from here. This is about <laughs> how much area that is. So now we collect that, we're going back upstairs and we will be using this okay so we're back here we collected that ignum ore there's something else we need to do we need to make a uh to automate while we work on stuff now that we have the ignum ore it can actually be built so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a, another assembler we'll put this here and i'm going to make Whoops. Grabbing this assembler, and we are going to make, we're going to come over here to handhelds, and we are going to make explosives. Now, I can make these by hand right now, as it stands, but I want to get this automated, because we can make 40 as it is. But I, we need to get this automated so that it can make them while we're digging and doing other stuff. Okay, there we go. Now we have everything brought in. We have iron plates coming from over there. Coming in. We have the wire coming in off our access build. And we have some electronic components getting shared over to here. Whoops. <laughs> so, now what's left is the Ignum Ore, which we collected 200 of that. And with that, we're going to put that into here. At what point, they're going to just start creating explosives. Now, one thing we also need to make, go back here, we need the explosive detonator. You only need one, so just click it once. We are done with that. Now, I'm going to place the detonator here in my slot three. It's waiting for electronic components at the moment. There we go. I, have a, I had some electronic components in my inventory, so I did the auto insert to throw them in there. And we have, that'll be enough to work with. We'll let it process the rest while we go down and do some more mining, <laughs> underground mining. 
Now we need to make room for our future expansion. So we're gonna go down there and we're actually gonna, I'm gonna show you how to use the explosives real quick. Okay, so we're back down here at the Ignum floor. We need room. And the best way to do that right now, instead of having the drill each block one by one is to use the explosives. Now to use explosives, it's pretty simple overall. You just grab it, you th toss it, and then you pull out the detonator and you click and it goes off. Now to the, de the explosives themselves, once you place them, you can actually just pick them right back up. It's not a long and involved process. It's just a case of place and click. Now, if you want to use them efficiently to create a nice size room, it takes a little bit of math and effort. So, okay, so the trick is, is we want to build, we're gonna be building down here, which means we're going to need to plan our floor out. Our floor is probably gonna be this area right here at this level, so 91. But we need blocks, so we're gonna have to go down lower than that. I'll mine this up by hand a little later, but we're gonna get the cat the cap is needed. Now the explosives go off at a nine block radius, which means from the where it explodes from four out. So you count the explosive as one, and then two, three, four, five. So if we want to make sure we don't destroy too much underneath kind of need to add right because we also have uh actually no there's a stone layer so it's not a huge detriment it just makes things smoother if you can just do it ahead of time so to speak but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start placing them let's see so 91 is our foot height so 90 and then 91 so 91, so I think about 90, no, it'll be 86 character height. So 87 is where the character needs to be standing. I'm gonna do a test explosion. No, 80, yeah, 87. And two, 91, 90. Now the thing is about, well, I guess I'll get about placements in a minute. So we want to land it on that face, I believe. Okay, land it perfectly. Now to just simply use it, just open the thing and click. Perfect, that was actually where we needed it at. As you can see, there's limestone rubble above us. Okay. Now we are we need to make basically make a room. And we're gonna use this as our start. So some of the techniques we can do real quick is when you have this initial explosion, like say later on you're using them, one of the best ways is simply put and you want to keep the same level, come to the center of it, because you have one, two, three four and then so right there five that's center of it so we're going to come to there that's the area where you're going to place the explosive at now the, th the catch is with explosives they explode from the face they're placed on 
the face of the voxel. So if you place it from there, it's going to detonate based on there. The reason why this makes a difference is because if you place, say like you go through mining and you place them on this block, because we had placed it on this block or that face of the, of the previous block. So if I place it on that one, it's going to skew the explosion over one block this way. So instead of looking like a continuous line like this, it'll jut out like this and continue like that. So I guess the best way to show you is just by doing it. So we're going to place it on this face instead. And the thing goes for the uh, face as well. All right, so we're going to place it there. And this should be, it should look the same as this but shifted off to the right by one. And it makes me look like a fool. The fuck? I've done this so many times. So I had placed an explosive off to the left side and got the, sh it shifted left by one block over. So the best way to make sure it doesn't happen is to consistently put it in the same center and on the same face that you put the previous one. And keep building from there. Now we want to do a continuous chain of blocks. So say we want to do five we're going to use the other five so we'll come here first let me so the center of the explosion should be one two about right there oh, one more okay So we're going to go we're going to place this one right here. Whoops. Now, the thing is this placement's not perfect, so try to do this the best you can. And we'll put that there. Try to make sure you line it on the very height that you need it at. All right, now we're going to go and we're going to do a chain of them, so we're going to do five. Now, obviously, I got this area open. If this was a completely filled aisle, you'd still do the same thing. So we're just going to go five spaces over. So we're at, our coordinate is at negative eight, or negative seven. So we're going to go five, which should be either negative two or twelve. which will be two. All right. All right, so we're at negative two, which is five positions from there. We're gonna grab a block, another piece of C4. And place it right there. And we're going to do that again until we get all five placed. 
which five from here, which we're at negative two. Remember, there is zero. So it's not just negative. So we are going to go negative two, which means negative one, zero, one, two, three. So we should be stopping on three. Another way you can do it is to count 10 mined blocks and then place it. So I got the last two set. We got this little corridor here. And 13, 8 to 3, negative 2, negative 7. So that's 15 blocks. Pull out the detonator. And... You have a nice straight wall to work with. And you can see this is where the blast had shift off to the left one. And this is why getting that one shift off can really mess it up. Because now you gotta clear this out by hand if you want a nice clean area. Thankfully the height, the, the ceiling isn't a big issue right now. So we can just clear through this. Because anything your explosion doesn't take care of, you're going to have to take care of by hand. There we go. And that is basically how you would use the explosives to dig down here. So as another thing, a precaution you need to be aware of with explosives, there is certain things that can be damaged by it now most there are a few items like the elevator here if you see in the under its description where it says high voltage grid at the bottom it has blast resistant mining depot blast resistant tracks blast resistant anything that is blast resistant it will say that it is said blast resistant like freight elevators now what this means is that when you use an explosive near said item say we just toss a few of these out here you know like this and this, this I don't care about this world <laughs> this is an older version yeah you just toss them out toss them out In this manner and you go to use the explosives well you get a lot of mess in order to get rid of this mess because these rubbles will stay in place you gotta kind of drill them to get rid of them so keep this in mind when you're doing your explosions too to keep out of range of your stuff and this won't happen next uh next episode we're gonna actually use this we're gonna take that ignum that we just mined and i'm gonna clear out some more of this afterwards and we're gonna start with the steel production in this episode so and uh yeah so Hopefully you enjoyed what you saw. I hope this was informative for you. Like, subscribe. If you got any questions, let me know. And uh, you might want to stick around after the end because uh, 
after this because I'm going to put a link to a clip from Twitch from one of my streams from a previous version of the game. And uh, yeah, you might want to check it out. So, all right. That's it. So this is Arcades. I stream on Twitch.tv as Arcades Test. So feel free to join me there. Uh, anything I ever do, just general engineering games. So, yep. This is Arcades signing out. Have yourself a good day.